for the channel because sometimes I do post them up there. All right, so JavaScript strings and methods. Why would we need them? Same with dates. You're going to need them all the time. Um, and in fact, ES6 has some really nice features around strings, but we're not we're not there yet. Um, but you see kind of glimpses of uh, some of the syntax now and then, and we'll we'll explain what what some of that is. <clears throat> so we just want to go over some properties. Uh, we want to talk about length, some some things like concat concatenation. I spell that right. Comparing how to compare strings. We might have uh, we sh we certainly saw saw how to compare dates. I'm sure you've already compared strings already in some of your um, work with the uh, prompts and the um, and different if conditions and, and switch statements from full stack one. <clears throat> you may know some of these already, but uh, again, let's go over some ones that are very useful. Again, not all of them, maybe, maybe one fifth of them, but um, ones I, I try to use ones that I use quite a bit. Again, can't stress it enough. Look at the docs. If it's not there, you know, don't write it out. If you there could be something built that could save you a hundred lines of code in one line, one single line, right? So you just look in those docs. Go through some string methods and then allow you to finish the lab, hopefully, or at least get some headway, headway on it, right? Strings. <clears throat> so let's talk about strings, primitive values now. Strings are primitive values. JavaScript strings are also immutable. That's a strange word, immutable, immutable, right? Yes, mutate. immutable means that when you process a string, you always get a new string, right? It's, it's um, in a way, it's kind of funny that the terminology will will uh, will actually come up a lot uh, with respect to objects and things like that. I don't know how familiar with you are, but if you are advanced when you're talking about React, there's a concept called Redux, which is about state management, and the object, the store, is immutable. Every time you make a change, you create a new object. You don't you don't change. The original objects and in a way with strings it's the same thing you create a new string you don't change the old one the old the original string doesn't change so that's what is not mutatable you can't mutate that string you just make another one and change that one immutable remember that terminology immutable you will run into it a lot and you'll stop and say what, what does that mean it sounds like a I, I don't understand that word just know that you will always get a new string or object if you see that word <clears throat> So um, keep that in mind, very important. To create literal strings in JavaScript, you can use those quotes, like we said before, it, it knows what to do. Again, let keyword is ES6. Uh, it's a different uh, context, you'll see it. It's, it's different than var, although you can use it. You may use it, you may not know exactly what it does, but you may, you may assign things quickly, um, but it has bonus features to it. Uh, that the traditional original var doesn't, uh, but that again, we'll get into the differences in ES6. So you can cast it in double quotes, you can cast it in single quotes, automatically it's going to know what it is. It's going gonna, it's gonna to figure it out. It's going to do that conversion, type conversion for you. Uh, sorry about that, I just kind of exited out of full screen, going back in. So if you want to create a string, you can do it in this way. So strings, J strings, useful for holding data that can represent in a text form, right? Um, some of the most used operations on the strings to check their length, yes, length, you will always, you know, you will always use that length property a lot, not just on strings, on lists. We haven't talked about lists. We haven't talked about arrays, but you will always be checking the length um, quite frequently. Uh, but when we're talking about strings, we still have we still have length. Concatenation. There's a couple ways to really concatenate. Basically, um, appending. Concatenation, appending. So if you want to, you know, you want to add a substring to another string and quickly append it. Concatenation. A couple ways to do that. Um, checking for the existence of substrings. You have index of method. <clears throat> you have a substring method. So you have a bunch of stuff uh, that you can work with here. 
So strings can be pre created as primitives from string literals or as objects using the string uh, constructor. Same deal, same deal as the, the date object, right? We establish as an object, a built-in object, not a primitive. So string can be a primitive as, as it is above here. And when you cast it quickly like that, it's, it's, it is what it is, it's a type, it's this string. But if you wrap it in this thing called an object, new string, and you wrap it, then you get an object back that has all of those utilities or tool, uh, tools in the toolbox to use now uh, as part of that. So now you can really drill into this thing, right, if needed. <clears throat> Again, you must know if you don't, you can escape special characters, which is always nice. So if you want to do a Windows line break, you do the slash R slash N, a new line, right? Is a slash N. Uh, Unix line break, I, I get those confused to be honest. Windows and line break, I always use slash N, but you need slash R and slash N, um, slash N, tab, backslash. So this is pretty interesting here. You'll run into this a lot. It's, 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 um, it's that quote. Sometimes that single quote will cause a problem. Especially with names, especially if you have a string where you have a first name that is like a, S a Scottish name, right? Uh, or sorry, a uh, last name. So you might get into this quite a bit where there's like an O'Brien, O, O apostrophe, Brian. You run into this a lot, a lot, a lot. And, and you can tell right there it's already, it's already barking at it because it doesn't like that. It doesn't like that with that single string, it'll bark at you. Sometimes you can wrap everything in a double quote to be fine, which it, it will just transform everything as a, oh, now it's trying to transform this. Hold on for a second. If I output that, it should, it should output it. But the single quote, cause again, it, it, it can, you can use both single and double and you'll see right there, it will, it'll crash on it right here. See, it doesn't, it doesn't like that. It says expected identifier. So they're saying that with this backslash here, you can escape it like that. Interesting, right? And you can also go ahead, walk up to it and give it a new line, slash N should give us this, this spacing here, which is really nice. So I don't have to do, I don't have to do a console log, right? Console log and then a white space, right? To, to kind of create that even even in itself that won't work right like you might try that you know can i can i can i create a line after it let's see can i add some spacing this in this kind of way you shouldn't have to all right you can but you don't need to do that right you don't need to like you don't need to console log you know this many this many line breaks in, a, in an ugly way right you, you shouldn't have to do that like like so on and so forth right because suppose i wanted to put four line breaks here you know i shouldn't have to do that that that's pretty that's pretty ugly i should just be able to just do slash new line slash new line slash new line however however many i want and then basically with respect to that i'll, I'll put that so that's pretty small but powerful still to know that you because you're formatting data now your 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 intention is to have a uh, a human a human uh, user to to view your data right so you need it to be presented in a way that the user understands so escaping special characters uh know about it it's quite good the backslash right there as we saw ex uh, escape that single quote string dot length all right so string dot length property again we we will need to use it quite a bit sometimes. Um, and it's in 16 unit codes. It's a read only property, right? Like a static, a static instance there. So let's see here for a second. <clears throat> so we have last name and we just walk up to it and we say, okay, what's the length of it now? Dot, so to, to access those methods, dot length, right? Dot length 10. All right, so let's let's look at this for a second here. If we had last name one, last name, last name one, and last name two, is, are these equal? Last name equals to last name two. 
What do you think? It's true. So maybe these are these are fine because they're not objects. If we wrap this, that's what they're trying to establish. This is the string itself. If we wrapped a new string around here, now we're converting this to a string object. Now this is not going to be it's not going to be the same. Oh my God, it is the same. Let's see. Maybe we're not doing equality like this. String and string. My expectation is it's false. Okay, it's false. Right. Because now they're both objects. However, if we dug into those properties there, right? Last name uh, dot length, are those equal? That should be true. Is that true? Yes, false and true. So now these are objects and they said a new, ob these are different. These are different instances of an object. We haven't talked about that yet, but there is properties in there you can drill into, right? The length and the length. Uh, and, there, and there's other ones as well uh, on, on, this, on this object now. But string dot length, you will use it. You will use arrays, array dot length, list dot length. You need sometimes to know that um, uh, the list that you got is has changed or not. Maybe maybe there was a change. Maybe you're comparing two strings or two lists. You need to make sure. Uh, is there any discrepancy between those two values? Maybe you have, you know. <clears throat> Maybe you have a list of um, something from a search result and you want to match it to a product list or product items in the database. Sometimes you need to filter through uh, and, and kind of, you know, um, recon reconcile the things that aren't there. And you may have two strings, good morning, and you may have a string called good, right? And you need to, you're basically comparing, are they either the same or not? Good morning, good night, you know, you're comparing those strings. Uh, I'm talking about arrays. We'll talk about that in a, in a later class. So if you want to access the characters, now we haven't dealt with arrays. We will. They're like a storage container. They're like a list. And you can access this, a string in the same way. Uh, each item, and I think we talked about this already, each item in the string has a representation of an index. So, so the first uh, placeholder there, H, is a zero index followed by one, two, three, four. So if we wanted to drill into or not drill into, maybe we wanted to do something with the check the first character. Maybe we wanted to see if the first character was uppercase or, or, or you know, access the last character. So remember, it's it's same as those dates. Zero is the initial position. So if I wanted to console log, uh, O'Brien from this, I have to, I can do la last name and then the index zero. That should give me O, right? <clears throat> Same deal, console.log, uh, last name is, that's the second part. That would be the apostrophe, I think, yes. And so on and so forth. If I wanted to get the, it gets tricky though. If we wanted to get the last piece here, now let's maybe, remove all these, these ends. So I just want to grab this last position of that string, right? So the length of it is one, two, th one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven, right? Console log length of the string, because this is where you may need the length of the string. So last name dot length. What's the length of that string? That string is seven. But if you try to drill into the lot, if you go, console.log last name seven, you're gonna get an error because it's undefined. It's, it's basically going outside the index. It's almost as if you need to go, the last one is six because it's going zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. So I could get, I could get N with six, which really is seven minus one but then we know the string length is seven so really it's to get that last item is really string length minus one because you're doing that kind of offset you know you're trying to um, make up for the fact that the first position is zero and therefore we need to uh, subtract one from the the last the length to get to that last element again that's it's very different way of thinking about things but that's how you access uh, characters directly. So that's what that's what this piece is saying right here. 
the string is hello. Same thing, console log string at string length minus one. And when you see those square brackets, you know you're accessing the index. Concatenating strings via the plus operator. So we only have, we already actually ran into this, right? We kind of ran into this when we were talking about JavaScript types and how, you know, you could, um, I think on the exam as well, you could do hello plus, you know, hello plus uh, 200 or string of 100 plus 200 comes up, it converts everything into a string. That was one of the exam questions as well. So you could use that. You could use the plus operator. That perfectly works fine. Um, but if you wanted to, you can use uh, append things piece by piece as a cleaner way. And we maybe, maybe have not seen this before, but it's called the plus equals operator. So it's basically, again, short form. Remember we talked about ternary operator, that Elvis operator uh, shortens the syntax for, for if statements. If you remember that, I'm not sure. It was a long time ago. Um, <clears throat> so we could do something like this, right? If, um, um, <clears throat> you know, if last name dot length uh, was equal to seven, you know, then we have an else if block. <clears throat> You know that jazz, right? You know, return, return, return true, return true. Otherwise, return false. It seems like a lot of work, right? I mean, look at that. That's a lot of work, right? So we're saying that with the ternary operation, we could do something like this: list dot length in short form. This question mark is kind of like the if statement that evaluates. If it's true, then return true. Otherwise, this else, this. Um, Colon is like the else case, and you can do this, right? Something like that, false, right? So you could get, you could potentially get rid of that in one line. So it kind of shortens it, but it's if you don't know what this means, it's very confusing. So in the same way, you could, you know, you could, you could, um, you could say last name. Well, if you don't know, constant won't let me assign this. Let's watch this. Let's see. If we wanted to do last name plus, you know. Um, whatever, <clears throat> likes pizza, right? If we go to run this now, it's gonna bark at us now. And that's one of the benefits of uh, ES6, right? It prevents this, but we would have to change this back to the, the vanilla JavaScript of var and then allows us to, to write over it. It doesn't lock it down, right? So now, okay, I could keep doing this statement in the same way, last name equals last name plus the next string and here, right? Let's see what that does, looks like, right? <clears throat> but then if I wanted to keep concatenating it, I'd have to do the same kind of long statement. Whereas they're saying that this short form here, last name plus equals um, likes pizza, right? And at the same time, last name plus equals and beer, which I do. So let's run that. All right, let's, let's let's comment this out and let's see what this looks like. Does that work? Does that give me an error? Okay, so same deal. Yes, all right. So if you see the difference there, right? It's just a short form of cleaning things up a bit. I don't have to keep, um, I certainly don't need to do this anymore because I'm already, this is basically saying that I know that I'm just going to append it. I'm concatenating it. So therefore, it's a lot cleaner, cleaner script. So you can concatenate in that way. Because you may need to, you may need to output this, or you may have a function like this. Look at that. He's building, if you can see, he's assembling some type of uh, CSS class there. Button, button primary, and button none. It looks like he's a he's appending some class information there. And you may need to do that, especially if you're working with jQuery or something like that. You might have to, um, you know, dynamically apply a style to, you know, a, um, um, you know, a submit button after you submit it you may need to apply a style and then disable it right maybe you need to throw up some like um <clears throat> sorry show show a uh, a spinner dialog a loader you know those are dynamic actions <clears throat> comparing strings so you can compare two strings you can use the operators greater than greater or equal to less than less than or equal to are those double those double equal operators 
So you may want to compare strings based on numeric values of JavaScript characters. Remember, each character in JavaScript converts to a numeric value. So you may get this situation here where A is less than B. OK, A, small case A, lowercase, lowercase, small case, lowercase A is less than B. Sure, that is true. However, lowercase A is not less than lowercase b. And that is strange because you would just think it is. But because probably the uppercase values have a lower um, numeric value, maybe that set is lower, then that case would be false. So that is, uh, that's strange. But that's, yes, it, it will compare it. And just remember, it converts back to a numeric value internally. All right. <clears throat> Break it up with a video. Probably going to be the net ninja guy again because he's pretty cool. All right, let me just let me just stop sharing for a second here.